Hello, dear ones. You're all welcome to today's lecture. In our previous lectures, we were able to go through what uh, DC machines are. And from there, we started to look into the DC generators in details. So we looked at the various types of DC generators. We looked at their mode of operations. And then we discussed um, all the equations regarding the various types of DC machines and the, the effects of load on the DC generators. Today, we are going to focus our attention on another type of a DC machine known as a DC motor. Okay, so when you talk about DC motor, there's no difference uh, of construction between the DC motors and the DC generators that we discussed in our previous um, lectures. The only difference is that in generators, the generated EMF is greater than the terminal voltage because you generate and then there will be losses along the, 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 the amateur resistance and then the other resistance depending on the type, the type of connection okay before you get your terminal voltage just like what i was explaining to you in class that you are giving maybe an amount of money like 50 cities um at home on your way to campus you bought maybe food maybe 10 cities so by the time you get to campus what will be the total amount of money remaining in your pocket so the money that was given to you in the house which is 50 cities represent the emf generated inside the motor the internally generated emf and then the amount of money that you use to buy food on your way are the various voltage drops that is incurred on the motor. That can be the voltage drop across the uh, amateur resistance, the voltage drop across maybe the field resistance, depending on the arrangement, if it's series or para. Okay, before you get the terminal voltage, that's the one that may be the amount of money that will be left with you in the house. So to get that total uh, amount of money, uh, remaining in your pocket, you have to subtract the drop, the amount of money that you spent on food from the amount that was given to you at home. Okay, so all the time you see that the amount of money that was given to you in the house is always greater than the amount of money that you, uh, you, that will be uh, with you on campus. Okay, because of uh, um, the drop or the amount that you used to buy food. That was in the case of the generator. But in the case of, uh, let's say, the motors, the terminal voltage is always greater than the internal generated voltage. It's a vice versa because in the motor situation, we supply, we rather give electric energy, okay, to the, the, to the machine and we get mechanical energy at our, uh, as our output. So the terminal voltage is always the amount of voltage that we are giving to the machine. That's your input in this case. And your output is going to be the EMF or the EA, the amateur uh, 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 EMF, okay. So let's see, DC motors have the ability to control the speed with greater accuracy. So when you look at the various types of motors that we have in the system, DC machines or DC motors have the ability to control the speed at a greater accuracy. So most of the, uh, the robots that you see around, they are all DC machines or DC motors that are being used to con uh, control the movement and the actions of the, uh, the robots because of the accuracy in the speed control. Okay, toy cars that you see around, the robot arm, um, before the robot can even move, it's a motor that regulates or controls its movement. Okay, they are all what DC uh, uh, motors. Okay, so a DC motor is an electrical motor. Okay, that uses electricity and magnetic field to produce torque, which turns the rotor and hence give mechanical work. Okay, so I explained to you the difference between a motor and a generator. For generator C, we said that for generators, you give mechanical energy and you get electrical energy as your output. But for a case of motors, you give electrical energy, electricity, and magnetic field, and it produces something we call a torque. We will look at what torque is. Okay. The torque turns the rotor, which gives a mechanical work or a mechanical energy as your output. So motors, the rotational energy or the rotation that we get is our output in the case of um, DC uh, motors. So let's see. In DC motors, we have the same thing, the same construction, everything just like DC generators. And the types too, they are the same, just like DC generators. I explained, I told you that the only difference becomes direction of what? Power flow. In the DC generators, we give mechanical and we get electrical. Here we are giving electrical and we are getting mechanical as our output. So the flow of that current is going to reverse. The direction of the flow of current is going to re reverse. So let's quickly look at how um, DC generators operate their mode of operation. I mean DC motors, sorry. So this is, let's say this is a DC machine, okay? DC being the motor or a generator, this is a DC machine. Over here represents our 
a field circuit okay here we're using a permanent magnet now i told you that the field circuit is to create the magnetic flux in small dc machines we can use a permanent magnet okay so over here we are using this one to represent the field circuit so you can see north and south pole here all right the coils that you see here there's a coil a brown coil over here that you can see one connected this way back to this particular direction it's what we call the amateur coil okay the one on the shaft okay so that is it and what you see the ring that you see here is the commutator okay so you can see that the amateur coil is connected to what to the commutator and what you see here is the brush the brush that i was talking to you about so you can see that the we get the supply from the brushes so we connect the positive to this side of the brush negative to this side of the brush okay and then this one is supplying current to the uh, the armature coil so there's a current flowing through the armature coil and there's a magnetic field so if you have north pole and the south pole there will be the magnetic field okay the magnetic field for, uh, showing in this direction okay so according to the fleming's left hand rule if you have magnetic field flowing in this direction an electric field also flowing in this direction there will be a torque okay or a rotation in this particular direction okay so let's see how the operation looks like so you can see that now you can see that when you supply electric current the electric current will be flowing through these conductors and because of this magnetic field also here it will force the uh, the coil or the uh, the amateur circuit to rotate in this particular direction so you see how the rotation is being done and the supply of current is through the amateur or the, uh, the, 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 the the brushes and the brushes are connected to the commutator you see that so you can see that at every turn there will be connection or a connection to the supply of electric current so this is how the electric motor actually works so let's quickly look at so you don't have only one set of coils. You can have a bunch of coils, as you can see here. Here we are having two set of coils to uh, facilitate the smooth rotation of the electric motor. So let's quickly go and see how the coils looks like. So you can see that in the other uh, part we are having only one coil, but over here we are having a bunch of coils on the armature circuit. So you can see that this one coil, this another set of coils, this another set of coils. So all these coils come together to eight the smooth rotation of the electric motor and you can see that this is the magnetic field so if you're not using a permanent magnet but we're using electromagnet then we have to find a way to create magnetic field on these coils in that case there will be coils also here to represent the field coils okay so you have field coil field coil here and then we have the amateur coils over here all right so in that case you have a way either a separately excited or self-excited you find a way to excite or create the magnetic field on the field circuit okay so that is how it is so let's look at how it is operating so now we are having our current source here <coughs> let's look at the operation again you have our current supply over here and then this is the uh, the, 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 the rotor okay this is the rotor and this is the shaft the rotor shaft okay then we are having our field uh, our, our amateur course connected this way so when you supply a current to the rotor when you supply current to the rotor just like we see here then there will be a rotation so this, this this is how the motor looks like so you can see here this time around we're not using a permanent magnet we're using uh, uh, what we call um, uh, self-excited okay so you can see that this is the field circuit okay you can see we have set of coils inside here these are set of coils that represent the amateur coils and then there's another coil outside here that is on the stator this is what we call the field coil so to create that magnetic field we have to what to connect a source from uh, the input okay this is where we are applying or supplying our current to the motor we connect another uh, conductor here to the the field circuit in this type of connection we call it a shunt connection because it is connected in parallel with the field or the amateur circuit and then in the series circuit you see that the coil or, or the amateur coil and then the uh, field coil they are all connected in series so this is the how the connection for 
the minute a motor or a generator it looks like that we are taking the scenario of a motor because we are supplying electric power to get a mechanical power or a mechanical energy so that's how it looks like so you can see that this is a series motor okay so with the series motor you can see that this uh, the third circuit, this is a third circuit, the outside here, this one core, this one core, this one core, this another core. And the inside, the one that is inside here, connected to this rotor rotation part, is what we call the amateur uh, circuit. And you can see that the third and the amateur, they are connected in series. This is how the connection is done. And this is our supply or our source of uh, electric power. Okay, so this is how it looks like. So this is how the machine actually operate for dc motors so this is a dc generator and this is the shunt the shunt to this how it is connected all right so i believe uh, you actually understand so this is how what is happening inside you can see that this is our magnetic energy okay or our magnetic flux and this is our current supply to this conductor so a current carrying conductor placed in a magnetic field will experience a torque in the form of what rotation okay so take note of that now that you know the operation or how the electric system works, let's go and look at the various. Okay, so let's go and look at the various formulas that backs this particular uh, scenario. So in the case of electric motors to uh, DC motors, we have separately excited motors, self excited, just like the generators, and then with the self excited, we have the shunt series and compound, just like uh, what we discussed in the DC generators um as uh, the other time so if you take this equivalent circuit for the separately excited okay you can see that this is the third circuit this is the uh the amateur circuit okay so we supply here we are supplying uh, electric energy to the terminals the vt we are supplying energy here so they are current to flow through this particular con uh, uh, resistor and they will be dropped so after the drop, the remaining will now get to the motor to create or to induce that particular torque that we require in the form of rotation. So let's quickly look at what our test has for us on this particular slide. So we say that uh, the amateur circuit, that's the entire rotor structure. This is the amateur circuit. This part is the amateur circuit. It's represented by an ideal voltage source EA and a resistor RA. Okay, this is the voltage source and the resistor RA. Okay, a battery that V brush in opposite to the current flow in the machine direction indicates the voltage drop. Okay, we will talk about this later on. The fourth coil produces the magnetic flux. Produces the magnetic flux are used are, are represented by inductor. Okay, and the resistor RF. The resistor uh, R. Uh, represents the external variable resistor sometimes uh, uh, loomed together with the field circuit i uh, used to control the amount of field currents in the circuit so as i explained to you the uh, adjustable or the variable resistor that we see here is used to vary the or control the amount of current that goes through the field circuit and we have this particular circuit here representing the uh, voltage drop across the brushes Okay, so we'll talk about this when we begin to look at the various diagrams. Okay, there's one unique thing about DC motors that I want us to um, take a look at. In the DC generators, we saw that when you start the generator and the generator begin to rotate, there will be EMF generated or induced in the coils. Okay, in the case of DC motors too, when the armature of a DC motor rotates under the influence of a driving torque, and amateur conductors move through the magnetic field and hence EMF is induced in them as, a, as in generators. So although we are supplying electric energy or electricity to the motor to cause it to rotate, okay, and we get a mechanical energy as a result, as a, uh, as a, uh, in the form of rotation. As the motor rotates, don't forget that whenever you have coils rotating in the magnetic field, there will be EMF induced. So though it's a motor, but the provide so far as the motor is uh, rotating, there will be EMF induced, just like a generator. So we call this EMF a back EMF. It's a motor door, but there's some small EMF that is being generated because of the rotation. So we call it back EMF. So the induced EMF acts opposite direction to the applied voltage by Lenz uh, law, known as back or counter EMF. So we have our supply current this way. 
we supply a, a voltage or a, a power, a electric energy, and the current flow this way. Inside the, the, the motor, because the motor is rotating, there will be EMF also induced, a small EMF also induced, which will also flow in the, which the current will also flow in the opposite direction. So we have one current flowing in this direction, we have another current flowing in this direction. Okay, so we call it a counter EMF or a back EMF. Okay, and this is the uh, formula for the uh, back EMF. Okay, so we have it IA is equal to V minus EB over RB. All right, so this is the formula that we will be able to generate over here. So V and R are usually fixed, and the value EB will be determined by the current drawn by the motor. So if the speed of the motor is high, then back EMF is large, and hence the motor will draw less amount of current and vice versa. So one unique thing about this back EMF is that when the motor speed increases, don't forget that when we're looking at the generator, you saw that when the speed of the generator increases, more EMF is generated. Okay, so in the case of the uh, motor two, when the motor rotates in a higher speed, there's high back EMF induced. So we use this EB to represent our back EMF, EB, back EMF. So this back EMF, this back EMF uh, is counter to the supply or the terminal voltage. Okay, so the higher the uh, speed, the higher the EB. And when the speed is too high and more back EMF is induced, you see that the motor will be drawing small uh, current because already the motor is generating current on its own. So it will need a small current from your supply or your source of energy to be able to, uh, to operate normally. Okay, so motors operating at higher speed will generate back EMF and that back EMF have a current that is opposite the, the direction of what the supply current so the higher the speed the higher the back emf or the emf generated by the motor itself so a small emf will be required by the motor okay so that is it so that's why in motors when you start a dc motor from beginning the motor re, re, uh, draws a very large amount of current so as the motor speed increases then the current drawn by the motor will reduce because the back emf is what being produced and hence the amount of current now required by the motor to draw from the source become less. All right, so that is it here. So let's look at something that we talk about. Okay, from the beginning, we mentioned the word talk, 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 talk. So talk, let's see what talk is. T is the talk and Newton meters, that's the unit for talk. Then the mechanical power developed is given by. So the talk equation that we can uh, talk about over here is given by T is equal to P and you know P, that's the number of a uh, 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 pair of poles. Multiply by the flux, multiply by the parallel conductors, multiply by current, the amateur current over pi, multiply by C. And I said that the speed, C depends on the type of uh, 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 amateur uh, uh, winding. So for the given machine, as we saw in the previous or the other deduction, so you said that Z and C, Z, C and P are fixed. So now the torque depends on our flux and our current. So it means that high current will increase the torque. High flux will increase the torque. The torque is the force that causes the machine to rotate. It's the for force that causes the machine to rotate. Okay, so that's what we are talking about. Torque, torque, torque. So the higher the torque, the higher the force that the machine is rotating with. Okay, so you look at another thing known as speed. speed. So when we get there, I will differentiate between the torque and the, the speed in, the, in a more practical way for you to actually understand the concept. So that is it for the talk. So let's quickly look at this particular question and see how we can best solve it based on the formula that we have in the other uh, slide. An 8-pole DC motor has a wave wound. Okay, so this type of uh, uh, one is what a wave wound. It's not a, 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 a lap one that we saw in the, uh, uh, the other uh, uh, discussion. Okay, with 900 conductors, so our Z here is 900. The useful flux per pole is 25 milli Weber, and the 25 the milli is just a preface times 10 to the power minus 3. You, you, you remember that. So determine the torque is exerted when the current of 30 amps flow in the amateur circuit. So over here we have our IE, the amateur current to be 30 amps. So let's see what we're giving in the question. We're giving P to do what? 4. Because the question says that 8 pole. So when the number of poles are eight, then the pair of poles becomes four because two poles forms a pair. C is two because it's what a wave wound. And whenever the, the connection is a wave wound, by default, the C becomes two. 
and we were giving our uh, file or the flask to be 25 uh, milli Weber Z or Z to be the number of conductors para conductors to be 900 and then our IE that is the amateur current to be 30 so putting everything into this particular formula we just substitute everything to this particular formula we are going to get 4 multiplied by 25 times 10 to the power minus 30 multiplied by 900 times uh, uh, 30 because of this particular 30 is our uh, amateur current all over pi multiplied by 2 so if you compute this with your calculator you're going to get 429.7 newton meter okay so that's a newton meter is a unit for torque and i said that torque is the the, the force the mechanic the force that is causing the machine to rotate so the higher the force the higher the strength that the machine can move with so if the torque is small then if you connect a particular load to the motor it can rotate because the torque the force should be able to overcome the torque or the weight of the what the the, 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 the load or the load torque so take a note of that so this is another question too uh, probably you take a uh, the uh, time and go through it the solution is there if you have any problem then when i come to class we will discuss it into details so So let's look at the types of DC motors and then discuss them as we did in the DC generators. So we begin uh, by looking at the separately excited DC motors. So a separately excited DC motor is a motor whose fuel circuit is supplied from a separate what constant voltage source, just like we did in the generators. Here we have our separate source of um, um, fuel circuit from. Uh, this particular diagram here okay and this is our motor circuit or the amateur circuit so let's go here to the flow circuit and discuss so you can see that we have our field uh, voltage so when you supply this voltage there will be field current flowing through the amateur circuit to create that magnetic flux so we have this adjustable resistor or a variable resistor here to control the amount of current that goes through here and don't forget that the amount of current that comes say determines the amount of flux that is going to be what to be generated all right and also if we want to find our field current we know this voltage and we know the resistance here so voltage over resistance will give us this field current we reduced this in our previous uh, um, discussion so it's nothing new from this one now the uh, major analysis have to be over here so we can see that in the case of the generators we were supplying we were uh, creating emf inside the in the generator so the flow of current will be in this direction but over here in the case of the motors we are rather supplying emf to the, the the motor so the flow of current is now from external source it can be from your battery it can be from your different generator or whatever source that you can think of we are supplying it to the motor so this is the terminals that you can see with your eyes the terminals that you can connect your electricity to these are the terminals so if you connect your electricity or whatever source to the motor now current is going to flow in this direction so current flowing in this direction there will be a drop so the drop across this resistor then the remaining EF voltage will now get to this amateur circuit so let's see if you can get a, 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 a maybe a formula for it now Number one deduction that we can make here is the supply current or the line current is the same as the amateur current because of the connection. Okay, and we can say that now our VT is equal to EA plus the amateur the drop across the amateur resistance because now we are supplying it here and there will be a drop here and the remaining voltage will now get here. Once again, if you use the catch up voltage law also to do our analysis, we can get it now if we take this as our uh, if we take our look in this direction okay we can see that uh, the direct the direction of our loop will point to this negative side of our ea so ea let's say e minus e because it's pointing the negative direction plus the voltage drop here so the voltage drop here will be i r okay let this ir represent this particular voltage drop then 
the arrow will be pointing to uh, the positive side of the terminal voltage plus T. Okay, one thing that we have to take note of is here the current is flowing in this direction. So it means that this part of the equation 2 is going to be negative because this becomes the negative side of what our resistance. What is the current? The current is flowing through this direction. So it means that this side 2 should be negative. So this side should be negative. So you can see that this side is negative. All equal to what? Let's say all equal to what? Zero. Or, or the current, or the catch off voltage loss is that in the closed loop, the sum of voltage equal to what? Is equal to zero. So if you want to make VT the subject, we will send all of this to the, up, the other side of the equation. So VT is going to be equal to when this negative EA cross the equal sign is going to be positive. Likewise, this side too, when it cross the, uh, the equal sign is going to be positive. So this is how the equation is going to be like. It can further be explained like if you are supplying voltage, they will be dropped here, the remaining one will be here. So if you want to get this supply, the drop here plus the remaining to give you this uh, terminal voltage. So it's just the same as the uh, generator, just that there's a, a reverse in the sign of the current flow. So in the other one, the current was negative. That's why we're getting negative over here in this particular sign. But over here, because the current is flowing in the reverse direction, it will become positive. So you can, pair, you can compare this equation to that of the generator. You can see the, 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 the generator, the equation was like, so the generator, the equation was A minus I A R A. That was in the case of what? The generator. But for the motor, Generator, this sign is negative. Motor, this sign is positive. That's the only difference because of the, the flow of current. Here, current is flowing from this direction to this direction. That is why it's positive. For generator, it flows from this here to this direction. That's why it's negative. So that's one thing about it. So I want us to end this lecture here. In our next lecture, we'll continue to look at the various types of DC motors and then we'll discuss. So until we meet again, I wish you all the best. This is Akanyele Bismarck.